All right, so what we're going to be doing is actually trying to solve a special relativity problem. Now, this problem isn't really that um, as complicated as it looks, um, as long as you're familiar with, um, with uh, a bit of special relativity, three velocities, four velocities, and uh, that kind of stuff. So the problem reads, if V is the three velocity of a particle and beta equals one minus v squared over c squared raised to the power of minus a half, prove that v dot d d t of v is equal to v times v dot and v dot d d t of beta v equals beta cubed times v v dot. Now keep in mind that beta is equal to one minus v squared over c squared to the power of minus a half. This is also known as the Lorentz factor. Okay, so you see that a lot in special relativity. So the way we solve this problem is by keeping in mind that we're dealing with space-time. So we're working in four-dimensional space-time. Right? So in other words, the velocity of a particle is not simply uh, v sub x, v sub y, v sub z. Right? The velocity vector. Right? So a particle doesn't just have a three velocity v equals v sub x, v sub y, uh, v sub z, right? This is not the case. When we're dealing with space time, we have to consider the four velocity of the particle. Okay, so if the particle is moving uh, very slow relative to the speed of light, then this is approximately true, right? But as the particle speeds up towards the speed of light, then this is no longer true. Uh, we have to keep in mind the four velocity, and we have to keep in mind uh, special relativity um, effects. So let's see here. What we're actually going to be using is the four velocity of the particle. So the four velocity is capital V, and capital V is equal to V sub x, V sub y, v sub z, but there's an extra component, the fourth component is ic, okay, and c is the speed of light. So let me just um, shrink this and put it to the side because we're going to be using this. Okay. If we want to solve for the dot product between v and the time derivative of v, right, in regular Newtonian mechanics, right, we would just simply do, oh, v dotted with acceleration will give us uh, v sub x times v sub x dot, right, will give us v sub x times v sub x dot plus v sub y times v sub y dot plus v sub z times v sub z dot. However, this is not true. This is not true. Considering the four velocity of the particle, we actually take the dot product between the four velocities of the particle. So what we're going to do is actually, first, first things first, we want to take the dot product between the four velocity and the time derivative of the four velocity. Now, when we take the time derivative of the four velocity, we take it with respect to tau, the proper time. Okay, so tau is the proper time. Now, the proper time is the time as measured by the particle in the particle's frame of reference, the particle that's in motion. If we want to calculate dvd tau, we use the chain rule. So dvd tau is equal to dv dt times dt d tau. Okay. The relationship between tau, the proper time, and t is this. d tau squared is equal to dt squared minus s squared 
over c squared. If we factor out dt squared, we find that d tau squared is equal to 1 minus s squared over c squared multiplied by dt squared. Okay. Now this implies that dt d tau is equal to 1 over 1 minus, I'm sorry, I made a slight mistake here. This should be v squared, because we factored out v t squared. So this becomes v squared. Okay, so we find dt d tau is equal to 1 minus v squared over c squared, square root okay which is just equal to beta so we can substitute this dt d tau for beta we can write dv d tau is equal to dv dt times beta Now, if you want to solve for dv dt, we have to consider that v is the four velocity, and we can write dv dt as d dt of v comma ic, where v here is v sub x, v sub y, v sub z. Right, so we've just combined it so that we don't have to write a lot. So, oh, and I forgot that with the four velocity, we have to include the beta term. Right, so this is d d t of this vector multiplied by beta. So since we have beta being multiplied and beta is a function of v, this time derivative here is going to be a chain rule. So we have d v d t is equal to d beta dt times z comma ic plus beta times dv dt comma zero. Okay, so dv dt is equal to this. Now, it'll be useful for us to know what d beta dt is, right? So if I take the time derivative of beta, I find that d beta dt, I'm not going to derive this, but uh, you can try it out for yourself. You have d beta dt is equal to v times v dot, where v dot is the time derivative of v, divided by c squared over one minus v squared over c squared to the power of 3 over 2. Okay. All right, so that means that V dot over the dot product between V and the time derivative of V is equal to beta squared times v comma ic dotted with d beta dt times v the three velocity plus beta dv dt comma ic d beta dt okay so things got a little bit messy here but it'll it'll simplify soon enough okay all right let's move this up a little bit higher okay so taking the dot product we have to be very careful here right so here beta squared times v 
dots with this term here okay and that dots to give us beta squared times d beta dt multiplied by v dotted with v okay so v dotted with v is v squared so i'll just go ahead and write that but that's going to be the magnitude of v squared and then plus beta cubed dv dt dotted with v okay and then we're going to have a minus c squared multiplied by beta squared times d beta dt okay so that's the, that's what the dot product of v dotted with the time derivative of v right when I, when I speak about this v i'm talking about the four velocities right the dot product between the four velocity and its own time derivative now there's a relationship that tells us that this dot product here is equal to zero okay so we'll put that relationship up here v dotted with dv d tau is equal to zero which implies that all of this here must be equal to zero and if all of that equals to zero then we can solve for this term here which is what we were looking for in the beginning right we were looking for v dotted with its time derivative and we're trying to prove that is equal to the product of the magnitude of v and the magnitude of v dot, the time derivative of v. Okay, so what we do here is we transpose every term to the other side except for this term here. So we get beta cubed dv dt dotted with v is equal to c squared beta squared d beta dt minus beta squared d beta dt times v squared okay at this point what we can do is we can cancel out a, a, all the beta squares involved in this equation so we can cancel out the beta squares so we just have a beta times dv dt data with v is equal to c squared d beta dt minus d beta dt and in fact i'll just factor out the d beta dt's out of the way so i'll just have c squared minus v squared right multiplied by d beta dt okay so d beta dt because of this relationship i can actually write d beta dt as equaling to v times v dot over c squared multiplied by beta cubed right so this becomes c squared minus v squared times v times v dot divided by c squared multiplied by beta cubed and again i can cancel out the beta terms one beta term over here one beta term over there which gives me v dotted with dv dt is equal to c squared minus v squared that looks like a u v squared divided by 1 minus v squared over c squared, right? Because beta squared becomes 1 minus v squared over c squared. And all of this multiplied by v times v dot divided by c squared. Now, if I factor out a c squared from the numerator, then the 1 minus v squared over c squared cancels out. So I can write this as c squared times v multiplied by v dot over c squared times 1 minus v squared over c squared 
divided by 1 minus v squared over c squared. And this cancels out. And so does the c squared. Right? So we've proven that v dotted with dv dt is equal to v times v dot, which is much different from the v sub x times v sub x dot plus v sub y times v sub y dot plus v sub z times v sub z dot, right? So this is a much different, uh, it looks more different than the, uh, than the previous consideration if we just use the three velocity as being just v sub x comma v sub y comma v sub z without considering the four velocity at all, okay?